so let's uh, welcome today's speaker, Ricardo. Everyone knows him, I guess, here. Uh, so I'm not going to give you any details of his biography, which is already there. Uh, what he's going to speak about today is uh, out there, the title, but it's essentially his master's thesis. Uh, and to all those who don't know, it won an award recently uh, in uh, what was the conference? The <laughs> Yeah. So um, uh, yeah. So that's it. Welcome. What? Ah, okay. <laughs> Today's talk is being video recorded, so please behave nicely. Yeah, so thanks. thanks for the short introduction. And <laughs> yeah, so uh, this talk is going to be uh, about my my thesis work. So it's uh, the thesis was entitled "On Views of White People Equal to What We Should Do for Be." Four times as the worst of network applications. So, <coughs> um, <coughs> well, the the widespread use of mobile technologies um, like uh, laptops, cell phones, PDAs uh, represent a gigantic step towards increased miniaturization of um, modern embedded systems. Uh, with it, computers computers became cheaper, better, more mobile, more smooth, and especially more pervasive in everyday life. Uh, this created an eagerness, so these advancements created an eagerness for monitoring, controlling everything everywhere, and with it, the necessity for large-scale communication infrastructures. Uh, so mainly these facts triggered the birth of the wireless network paradigm. Probably you all know about uh, wireless networks, but we expect that in the future, uh, wireless communications will be embedded in uh, everyday objects, things like phones, gadgets, cars, fridges, even animals and people. Uh, so there are many prospective applications uh, going from building automations, which is in fact the main focus of uh, like the ZB lines, for instance. Homeland security events monitoring, for instance, this is a picture of Mecca, uh, where every year thousands and thousands of people go there. Uh, industrial automation, personal healthcare, the, the the possibilities are enormous. So uh, obviously there are some challenges. Uh, in fact, due to the limitations of the, this technology, there are several limitations in terms of processing energy and memory and communications. We have lower bit rates, lower rate of coverage, and with it, some challenges uh, challenges uh, arise. For instance, reliability, security, mobility, scalability are some examples. Uh, this thesis focuses on the throughput, delay, and timeliness, and on energy efficiency, especially on these uh, particular challenges. So, uh, the hypothesis of the thesis was: uh, Is it possible to provide quality of service? to large-scale wireless sensor applications relying on standard and cost technology, namely on the 15.4 and on the ZP communication protocols. Uh, so why using standards and cost technology? Well, there are three main reasons why. First, for reducing the development and maintenance costs, we can buy them. So it's, this means that we can actually focus on the things we want to do. Uh, other than uh, uh, the, the, the platforms themselves. Also for increasing interoperability. For instance, it will be easier to interact with other people from the academia and the industry. Also for speeding up their utilization deployment in real world applications. Uh, another question, why using 15.4 and ZP standards? Well, uh, the 1504 is a very energy efficient protocol. Uh, it's you can have adaptable duty cycles that can, which actually means that you can have your devices to sleep uh, and thus saving energy. Also, uh, you have low data rates and low low radio coverage, as you can see on that on the right hand side picture. Then, uh, also it has a very flexible MAC protocol which supports both real-time traffic with uh, their uh, guaranteed time source and best effort traffic with the uh, CSMCA mechanism. Also, because it has, uh, it supports uh, scalable network topologies, 
like example of mesh network and cluster tree. Uh, then you have obviously many uh, available uh, uh, platforms, uh, commercially available platforms. So uh, <coughs> a quick overview of the 15.4 for those who are not familiar with this protocol. The 15.4 uh, uh, provides two, uh, uh, two uh, uh, modes, uh, beacon enabled mode and non beacon enabled mode, which just means you have a synchronized mode and a non synchronized mode. Uh, in the synchronized modes, which is the one we are focusing on, uh, supports uh, GTS and, uh, and uh, also uh, best effort traffic with the CSMACA. So this is, uh, I'm going to move this way. This is a, a, a super frame structure of the 15.4. Uh, here you have beacons, which are frames sent by a coordinator to synchronize uh, the, uh, the other devices. And uh, you have a cap, which is a contention access period. You may, you may have a contention free period where you have the GTSs for real time traffic, and you may or not have a, a, an inactive period uh, where the node may sleep. Uh, uh, okay, you have some time slots, and this is pretty much it. So, uh, why our our interest in the cluster tree? Well, uh, it's scalable. Okay, mesh is also scalable, but cluster tree is synchronized, which means that you can have inactive periods in all nodes. I mean, all nodes can sleep, not only. The, not only the end devices, like in the example of uh, mesh, uh, mesh uh, topology. Also, it's, uh, due to that synchronization, you can have, like I said uh, earlier, you can have uh, uh, GTSs, guaranteed bandwidth, and uh, we, because you don't have redundant paths, you can actually offer some guarantees in, can, in, in terms of uh, 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 delay bandwidth. Um, also, the fact that is not com commercially available, it's good for us in the academic world because we can uh, uh, contribute with uh, something. So, uh, next I'll be presenting uh, the four major <coughs> contributions on CSS. They are, they are related to the performance evaluation of the slot of CSMCA, uh, related to the HNAME, which is a hidden node avoidance uh, mechanism, related to real-time communications, over cluster trees and to the porting of the OpenZB stack to the Erika operating system. So regarding the first one, <coughs> um, this performance evaluation had two main objectives. First, to measure the performance limits of the protocol, uh, to understand the impact of some of the MAC parameters, for instance of the beacon order and of the, the, the back of exponents. Also, to understand the effectiveness of the hardware platforms we have available and uh, but this by comparing simulation and experimental results. Uh, our study was focused on, especially on these metrics, on the network throughput and on the success probability. 